If 2011 was just the teaser for the Wii U, 2012 would be the kickoff. On June 5th, 2012, Nintendo held their E3 2012 press conference. With the Wii U coming out soon, there was still a lot of info that we didn't know about. While we didn't hear about info such as the price or release date just yet, we did learn some interesting little tidbits. The main thing that stuck out to me was this super duper cool looking black model. But we also saw a new finalized version of the Wii U controller, now officially known as the gamepad. We learned that the Wii U would support more than one gamepad which would be sold separately. 10 years later and I'm still waiting for that. And we saw a total of 23 games coming to the Wii U. Some of the main takeaways from the game selection was a new Pikmin game, a new Mario game, and a new mini game collection called Nintendo Land. This was also the beginning of Nintendo's silly phase where they actually started reacting to internet memes. Yes, my body was ready. Overall, I thought this was a nice presentation that showed us a lot of what would eventually be coming to the Wii U. Later on in the year, specifically September 13th, 2012, Nintendo held a special Wii U preview presentation. I'll never forget this day because the event took place at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, which is 4 a.m. Hawaii Time. And this was during my middle school procrastination phase, so I literally just stayed up all night doing my algebra homework when this started. Anyway, this was the big event we were all waiting for because we learned the substantial information about the Wii U. The Wii U would release on November 18th, 2012 in North America and would come in two different bundles. A basic set which comes with an 8GB white Wii U coming in at 300 US dollars, and a deluxe set costing 350 US dollars which comes with a 32GB black Wii U, Nintendo Land, and something called the Deluxe Digital Promotion which would let you get points for every game you digitally downloaded. We also learned that all Wii accessories would be compatible with the Wii U, and that there wouldn't be any Wii remotes or nunchucks included because Nintendo expected you to just have some lying around. They weren't wrong. During the presentation, Nintendo also showed off some games including Nintendo Land, LEGO City Undercover, and even Call of Duty made an appearance. But one thing that stuck out from this presentation was something called Nintendo TV. So Nintendo TV was basically the Xbox One's TV functions before the Xbox One. With Nintendo TV, you would be able to look up whatever show or movie you wanted, and it would give you the options of where to watch the content, whether it was on Hulu or on live television or something else. There was also some interesting supplementary content for the gamepad, like football plays during a football game. Don't get me wrong, I know just as little about football as I do about sports in general, but this was honestly a pretty cool feature. Overall, this presentation was worth losing a complete night of sleep for. It was pretty soon after the preview presentation when the day had finally arrived. Wii U release day, baby. As a hopeless little 13-year-old, my mom took me to GameStop where they only had the basic set available, and we ended up having to go to Best Buy to get a deluxe set. From what I remember, I don't think the demand for the Wii U came even close to the ridiculous times we're in now with the PS5 and Xbox Series X. In fact, I think all I had to do was put in an order for my Wii U on the Best Buy website before I left. Anyway, I got home with all my little Wii U pickups. I ended up getting the Wii U Deluxe set, a Wii U Pro controller, and new Super Mario Bros. U. I was so excited to see what the Wii U was all about, but here's what actually ended up happening. For whatever reason, my initial Wii U system update took forever. It literally wasn't even until pretty late at night when I finally got to play my Wii U. And unfortunately, this would be a sign of the things to come with my first night with the Wii U. Just navigating the Wii U operating system was noticeably slow as heck. Even something as simple as going from the system settings back to the main menu felt like I had children and watched them graduate by the time it finished. It was especially unfortunate because the Wii U operating system was quite pleasant to use. It was basically the same layout as the 3DS, with all of your games and apps laid out on the gamepad, and what Nintendo called the Wada Wada Plaza up on the TV. But anyway, how were my first games on my brand new system? The first game I popped in was Nintendo Land, which came bundled in with the Wii U Deluxe set. Nintendo Land was basically the tech demo for the Wii U, similar to Wii Sports on the Wii. It was basically a virtual amusement park with attractions based on Nintendo franchises. So you can gather up up to five players and play as your Miis in this little Nintendo Land amusement park. There are 12 mini games or attractions that you can play through. You have the team attractions, which are one to 
four or five players, one of which includes The Legend of Zelda Battle Quest, and in this attraction you and your friends are walking through Hyrule. I think my favorite part about this mini game is the cute enemies from Zelda. Then we have the competitive attractions which are two to five players. I think the most notable one here is called Mario Chase. That's me. In this mini game, one player plays as Mario on the gamepad. Meanwhile, you have four players playing as Toads on the TV. The Mario player has a mini map on the gamepad which shows all of the locations of the different Toads. Meanwhile, the four players on the TV have to work together to find and tag Mario. And something really funny about this mini game is that it actually uses the Wii U gamepad's camera so that you can see the Mario player's face and also say hi to the government. And then finally, if you you have no friends. <laughs> There's also solo attractions for one player. I think the most well-known one is probably Takamaru's Ninja Castle. It's based on a Famicom disc system game. Anyway, this minigame was actually shown in the Wii U reveal trailer. You swipe ninja stars from the Wii U gamepad onto the TV. It uses the Wii U gamepad's accelerometer to aim your ninja stars, which is pretty cool. Overall though, I think Nintendo Land is pretty decent for like a party game. I think most groups of friends will probably get the most mileage out of this game from the competitive attractions. So it is a bit of a bummer that all of the competitive attractions are all just kind of a spin on tag. But hey, I mean, these are pretty fun mini games that actually make use of the Wii U gamepad. Honestly, Mario Chase was the game that kept me coming back to Nintendo Land even like years after. Granted, Nintendo Land is not on the level of Wii Sports in terms of tech demos, but it's a decent game that shows off what the Wii U gamepad is capable of. And if you weren't playing Nintendo Land, then you are probably playing New Super Mario Bros. U. This was exciting because it was the first time a Nintendo console launched with a Mario game since the Nintendo 64 with Super Mario 64. And considering how beloved Super Mario 64 is, this would have to be a success, right? Well, New Super Mario Bros. U was a follow-up to New Super Mario Bros. 2, which launched on the 3DS in July 2012, just five months earlier. It was based on this demo called Super Mario Bros. Me, which was shown off at E3 2011 when the Wii U was first revealed. But where the heck are the Miis? Anyway, this was the first HD Mario game. And while the game does look pretty good, especially considering this was Nintendo's first HD console, it was definitely harder to appreciate the full HD resolution considering that this is a 2D Mario game. In terms of how this game used the gamepad, basically when you play the game in multiplayer mode, one player can take over the gamepad and place blocks to help or hurt players going through the level. The gamepad player can also tap enemies to immobilize them. So it's more of like a half player similar to what we've seen in Super Mario Galaxy where the second player just catches star bits. Anyway, we have some like smaller updates with this game. There's a new power up, the Super Acorn. It lets you take a flying squirrel form, which is basically just Raccoon Mario from Mario 3, but I mean, whatever, it's kind of cute, not gonna lie. <laughs> And then they also introduced this interconnected map where all of the worlds are actually connected to each other. There's basically no loading going on between the worlds, which is like pretty cool. But in the end, New Super Mario Bros. U is a very safe Mario game. I know this game gets a lot of flack for being just another 2D Mario game. It doesn't really reinvent anything or, you know, introduce anything drastic. But as your local 2D Mario fanboy, I can pretty confidently say that I actually enjoy this game. I'm the type of guy that will play any 2D Mario game that Nintendo gives us. But I mean, I can understand where people are coming from. It is a very just same old, same old new Super Mario Bros game. Another exclusive Wii U launch title that Nintendo was really hyping up was called Zombie U. This was like a zombie survival horror game made by Ubisoft. And I guess this was interesting just because it was Nintendo really trying to go into like that M-rated type of game lineup. And it was pretty much everything that you would expect. Like you're running away from zombies and whatnot. You use the Wii U gamepad to like do little things in the game. I mean on paper it sounds really really cool. But in the end I honestly think I played this game like one time and that was it. I was not captivated by the story or the gameplay or pretty much anything. I ended up just not caring for this game at all. And what was really funny was that Ubisoft went and released this game on Xbox and PlayStation instead just being called zombie. So I mean, it was unfortunate that, you know, this game just did not do very well. <laughs> 
And then something interesting about the Wii U's launch is that there was actually quite a variety in third-party games. I feel like there are lots of different opinions on the Wii U launch titles, but I have to say that the games available for the Wii U on launch day, it was actually pretty impressive just how many different games there were, especially when you compare it to the Switch. One of the games I picked up for the Wii U on launch day was Call of Duty Black Ops 2, which is so funny to imagine that Call of Duty would be a launch title for Nintendo's newest console. I just feel like these two things do not mix. <laughs> but anyway, based on what I played, I feel like Call of Duty Black Ops 2 on the Wii U was like perfectly okay. I think what they really focused on with Call of Duty on the Wii U was the local play features. They offered a bunch of different options for what can be shown on the gamepad. Of course, you can play directly on the gamepad, but also with two players you could have one player playing on the TV and one player playing straight off of the gamepad. So I mean that was pretty cool. Of course one player is clearly at a disadvantage playing on the Wii U screen compared to an actual TV, so you give the gamepad to your annoying friend that you just want to beat in Call of Duty. Anyway, another third-party game that I picked up for the Wii U on launch day was Scribblenauts Unlimited. I honestly wasn't expecting much from this game, it just seemed like a kind of like silly kids game that I could try out. But I was pleasantly surprised with how much fun this game was. It was my first time playing a Scribblenauts game, and it felt like it fit on the Wii U really well. I look at the Scribblenauts games that are released on the Switch, and I just can't imagine playing this game without a touch screen. So typing out the words on the gamepad and then watching it come to life life on the TV. It was pretty cool. And playing through that game was just so much fun, and I was actually very surprised how much I enjoyed Scribblenauts Unlimited. And the last third-party game I got at launch was Little Inferno. This is another game that really really surprised me just how much fun it is. And basically you're sat in front of a fireplace and you just burn a bunch of stuff. And the fact that this game came out later in the year, it felt like the perfect winter game. You get all cozy sitting in front of the virtual fireplace. It's just a fun game, and I'm glad that I actually picked it up on the Wii U.